Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel, hope you're all having an awesome day. And today's video is going to be, I guess a baby bit controversial, but this is just my own personal opinions and what I see online. But today we're going to talk about brands that everybody hates. So these are makeup brands and companies that people just overall always have like a disdain for, whether it's their products. Or the people behind them all that good stuff so today i want to talk about them the reasoning i think they get these reputations and what i think of it personally so without any further ado let's get started okay guys i want to give a quick shout out to my brand theopencrypt.com and at theopencrypt on instagram i have a whole bunch of new stuff that just came out including the creature mirrors which are limited edition we have some beetlejuice candles wax melts and other stuff like that so if you guys are interested i'll leave a link down below i always appreciate your support on that and let's get started with the first brand which is going to be too faced so Too Faced Cosmetics is really known for like their cutesy branding, the cutesy packaging, and things that were really big hits for them I would say is like their Sweet Peach palette, their Sweet Peach everything because they turned that one success into a million different products. They have a whole bunch of things that have really done well over the year. They have chocolate bar palettes, like the white chocolate wasn't as good, but like the regular chocolate bar and then the gold chocolate and all that. They had a whole bunch of like bars and stuff, palettes that went really well. They also have like foundations that are pretty popular, selling in Ulta and everything, and in Sephora as well, but the display for Too Faced has significantly decreased inside of Sephora stores. It is a bigger like market in the Ulta stores now. They have a bigger lineup in there. But I think it's just how like retail works. So Too Faced has always been kind of a controversial brand because a lot of their products look exactly the same. Like they're all like very neutral with a cutesy packaging and or they have a colorful one and it's like really bad quality. And people think it's just super repetitive, just cutesy packaging. They also have like certain things which have been like controversial as far as their packaging names. Um, like the Pretty Rich things. They had like a... a a word I'm not gonna say a uh, product in collaboration with like a housewife or something I don't really know who she was but they had like that stuff also the brand owner at the time and he's no longer the brand owner but I think he still owns part of the company I'm not entirely sure was not a great dude and he had like a cake that said like rich lives matter which was not cool and he's just not and giving anybody the good vibes of the sister of him has a whole bunch of controversy he doesn't like Nikki tutorials Nikki tutorials did a collab with Too Faced and it was a major fail apparently they screwed her as far as like the contract price of what she was getting paid for the collaboration and the quality of the palette was not at all what we were promised and it was just ops it's just like a million different things it's not like one thing that Too Faced has done that makes people be like mm, Too Faced it's just like a whole bunch personally I am not someone who cancels brands I'm not someone who wants to cancel people there's only one person in the beauty space that I think should be canceled um just because he shouldn't be talking to children constantly but <laughs> Um, other than that, I'm not like a cancel person. I don't believe in that, especially because when you think of a brand, you're thinking there's so many more people behind it than just the one person, like the one Jared guy from Too Faced or whatever. There's always so many more people behind the scenes doing the marketing, working in the factories, doing them their sales, their marketing team, everything like that. There's just so much more into it than just the one person. So I'm not here to sit here and like cancel any brands, especially in this video. But I just want to explain why I think these brands have this reputation that like everybody hates them, even though I know all of us watching this video don't like, you know, I don't think we're hateful people. I, I try to try to think people aren't hateful, but you know, it is what it is. But those are the reasons for the Too Faced controversies. Overall now, I think because the Jared guy isn't like the owner owner anymore, I think Too Faced just has like a bland taste in people's mouth because there's nothing that's interesting about it. They'll put like a really cute packaging but the insides of some of the stuff is just lackluster and then the quality of the products are always hit or miss. Like you could have an amazing gingerbread spice palette and then get like the extra spicy palette the next year and it's not the same. Like they're so hit or miss their quality and then like you know a lot of us aren't going to fall for the cutesy packaging every time. Too Faced is also the only brand that I know of that will release 25 different Christmas holiday like products and stuff. It's always a lot with them. The next brand that I want to talk about today is Huda Beauty. I have a list. <laughs> so Huda Beauty is known for like I think being more high end than it should be in my personal opinion. That's how I see it. The brand owner Huda Katan has had some controversies in the past but I really don't think she's too problematic as far as I am aware. Of course I don't know everything. I'm not like in the drama reading the news every day but a lot of the things with Huda that we have 
is like I've heard things about stolen ideas as far as marketing things they had a whole bakery themed product launch right after beauty bakery started becoming popular and like their marketing pictures were very uh compared at the time so we thought there was like stealing between things then also everything this video is my own personal opinion and uh a conspiracy you know don't sue me um whatever not saying it's facts I just feel like we had that scandal. There's been a couple times where she's just like rubbed people the wrong way. And overall, like a lot of people don't like the overly priced stuff when the quality is just kind of, you know, average. And then like the packaging sometimes is really weird. Like they have a clear fronted palette, which is odd. And then like the, she has a foundation that is either hit or miss. You either love it or you hate it. But it was so overly fragranced for years. Like all of the Huda Beauty products usually have so much fragrance in them and a lot of people can't have fragrance for their sensitive skin but like that was a huge thing for a while they did finally at the beginning of this year release a unscented unfragranced version of the foundation but it's just known that like huda beauty's products smell up a ton and then huda katan herself who owns the brand has a turn of followers on instagram and there's been controversy saying that like all those followers aren't real so i don't know but that's a lot of the stuff behind Huda Beauty. I feel like I'm missing stuff though with Huda. So if you know anything else, let me know down below. Next up is Tarte. Now Tarte is the only one I know recently has gotten into controversy at all. So Tarte has a couple things. So Tarte, I personally like Tarte because I'm kind of boring. Like I love a dark grungy moment. I love some colorful stuff. But like I also enjoy a basic B palette, you know, and I really like that Tarte Lone Bloom palette and I love their nude eyeliner. So there are some Tarte things that are absolutely fantastic. Now Tarte has a reputation for being boring, you know, and like I said, they release the same kind of palette over and over and over again. They might change the packaging on it, but Tarte is like usually a pretty neutral, basic, boring palette. Maybe like a little bit more towards the warm or the cool side, depending on the day. But they don't have that many like, oh my god, this is amazing products. They try once in a while to release a product that's more innovative and stuff, but it comes off kind of weird. Like they have the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, which is fantastic. Then they came out with a creamy version, which is beautiful. But in between there, they came out with a glow wand, which seemed like a Tarte Shape Tape glow wand would be like, ooh, a glowy version of the concealer. It turned out to be an add-on product that was like really weird. Um, just a really weird release from them. They also have the found sealer, which sounds like a foundation and a concealer, but it did not have much coverage to it. So they've had some releases that were just kind of odd. But on top of that, they also do weird collabs. Like they had it back in the day. It's a long time ago. They had a True Blood palette with like a pretty corset packaging, which was beautiful looking, honestly. Looking back at it now, I was like, this is kind of revolutionary. Like looking for a packaging and to do it with a TV show. I thought that was fun, but it didn't really match the Tarte brand. And then like last year, they released a Lele Pons palette that was very childlike, even though she's a grown adult. But, and then she's like, I don't know, she doesn't do makeup, so I don't understand what that was either. But, like, they were doing weird things. Like, Tarte's kind of a weird brand. Again, not hating, because I love a neutral palette, but they're known for being boring or they'll do something really odd. Now, recently came into controversy about filters. So, they had a primer <laughs> that they were showing online, and they would be like, ooh, it gives you a nice blurred, no pore effect. Literally not possible. Everyone has pores. You can minimize them. I do believe some products make my pores look smaller than others. But they had this thing and it was like showing them putting over the skin and then like a filter would pop up allegedly and it would like make their skin look better and they were like no filter beautiful and you could clearly tell it kind of glitched and that was kind of weird <laughs> but like do I hate misleading marketing like I don't like it you know marketing's part of the job is what everyone does and I get it make a dollar like hey I'm here to promote my little small business with wax melts and candles and earrings and stuff I totally understand marketing but it's when it's misleading that I have issues with it so that's something that kind of put me in, like a little disdain for tart because like if you have a filter on admit it you know I don't feel like people should be posting like heavily filtered stuff and then acting like it's not like people need to know especially younger people on the internet who have like phones in their hands all the time looking at Instagram and stuff if something is heavily filtered let us know. Like if you smooth your skin out, you want to brighten your eyes. Like what I do is I whiten the brights of my eyes for pictures. You know, have at it. You know, a little face tune here and there. I get it. Help your self-confidence. But when you take it to the extreme or you do like that glow effect thing on TikTok that's like super filtered, 
you know, people should know that it's not realistic. And I don't like Tarte doing that as to sell a product, you know, like selling me a product saying, oh, look, she has no pores now because you put a filter on her face. Like, I don't like it. I don't like that Tarte, but Tarte has been known for being kind of boring, kind of weird. And then that recently. Next brand is KVD Beauty. It was Kat Von D, then it was KVD Vegan Beauty, and now it is just KVD Beauty. And it's been through a lot of rebrands in the last like three years or so. But let's talk about that. So originally it was Kat Von D's brand, and like it had Kat Von D's artwork, she owned it, all of that. And she got in a lot of controversy for being <laughs> anti vax, which was weird. I mean, <laughs> I. I Okay, that's weird, but that was a thing, you know, and then after she stepped away, like, you know, this was not going well for her, her brand was really suffering, we could all tell, they rebranded, someone else bought it, you know, they kept the name KVD instead of Kat Von D, they just shortened it to KVD, which is a weird move in the first place, like, that's the first issue with their rebrand, so the original controversy, because Kat Von D was controversial, then it had a rebrand. And the brand had no sites, like it, no visible sites of where it was going or what it was rebranding to. And like, that was that. Uh, also back in the day, there was like a Lolita shade and like a bunch of controversial shade names and stuff. And now the brand is KVD Beauty. And I really think the KVD Beauty where it's branded towards like tattoo artwork and stuff has really put a new light on the company as a whole because originally it had controversy from the owner and scandals like that then the packaging everything just people just did not like it people did not like the clear packaging on the new palettes people did not like where the brand was like not having a clear sight so that's why a lot of people hated it because it just didn't have a clear vision in mind and now they have like a new vision in mind and it looks like it's headed towards the right direction after the second rebrand so i feel like kvd could recover from this like the kvd brand Although, if, honestly, if people, they want people to like it more, they should just change the name. In my opinion. It's going to cost a lot of money because it's all in their packaging and all the stores and stuff. But I feel like that's the best way to rebrand it. They did do well with their good Apple foundation recently, so I feel like a lot of people don't hate them anymore. But for a long time, it was either Kat Von D making them not like the brand, or the rebrand had no clear vision, and that's why they didn't like it. Next brand is Jeffree Star Cosmetics, and I feel like this one's pretty self-explanatory. People don't like it. People don't like the person behind the brand, and a lot of people also... Okay, so it's Jeffree Star's brand. Obviously, Jeffree Star is a controversial person. People do not like him, what he's done, everything, things he's said. I totally get that. I understand it. I respect that. You don't have to support a brand if you don't want to. That's, you know, I get it. It's cool. So besides the obvious fact that Jeffree Star is a very controversial person in general, a lot of people also don't like the way the products that he releases are marketed, themed, and named and stuff. Like the Orgy collection was not something people really um, seemed to like the name of. I personally did not care for the name of that palette either. A lot of it people like thought during the beginning of the pandemic that the name cremated for a palette name was inappropriate. However, that one I did not see as like a big thing to hate on because first of all, people die every day. I know it sounds bad, hear me out. It's always going to be a thing that people are going through. And also these products are planned so far in advance. He had no way of knowing this was going to happen. So that was another thing that people did not like. But overall, it's definitely the person behind the brand driving the hate towards the brand. And also anyone who touches or uses the brand. I, I experience that all the time. But He's the controversial person, but again, I always look at how many people are behind it. He's making jobs in the country and everything with his manufacturing being in the U.S. So I see it as more than just him behind the brand, but I totally understand and respect people not supporting it. And I definitely see why, like, the overly sexualized names aren't necessary. It's not my favorite thing in the world either. Speaking of controversial brand owners, let's talk about Dragon Beauty. Now, I was recently thinking about doing a video on brands that I give less than two years to survive. I thought that was kind of harsh, kind of mean, but I thought it'd be like a good video concept because I feel like some brands just don't have that oomph behind them to like keep it going. So Dragon Beauty is the brand I'm talking about that people do not like now. So Nikita Dragon has a million scandals behind her too. You know, brand owners in general, People in general aren't great people. Like, I can sit here and be optimistic that someone's going to change a million times over because that's just what I want to hope for. Um, but, you know, people have controversies, not good people. I, you know, I don't know. what We can't expect everybody to be perfect, but she is uh, definitely not. But besides people not liking Nikita as a person, the brand itself hasn't released any products that seem revolutionary or inspired. The packaging on her first palette, the only palette right now, like, face palette-wise, 
is not something people like to look at. I don't know. People think it's really ugly and creepy. I don't like the way it looks either. Um, and then the inside color scheme is just really odd. It doesn't feel like the powders, the, like the single powders or the space palette she released with the powders looks at all like it would work for every skin tone. It doesn't really make sense, but uh, yeah, that's just it. And I just feel like it's a really uninspired brand. Okay, so lastly on this video, it's probably gonna be a lot of trouble, <laughs> is Morphe. So Morphe is disliked for a bunch of different reasons. Morphe really started out as being like the cheap brand that they could get influencers to talk about, I feel like. And then it became the brand that every influencer was pushing. They really kind of dropped Sigma brushes as far as like beginning influencers. They used to use Sigma brushes and they moved on to Morphe brushes because they were cheaper. They could get more of them for free from the brand and the fact that they got a 10% off discount code with them. So, um... Uh, you would see everyone like you could use Jacqueline's Jack Attack, you could use James Charles's James code, you could use all these different influencers' codes who would promote them like four times per video. Just Morphe, 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 Morphe. There's videos of people like, you know, promoting their code that much. And I hear it like, you know, promote your brand, promote your code, promote your whatever, get your dollar, especially if someone's gonna buy the stuff anyways, get your dollar for sending in there. I am totally agree with that. But it, like it just became a lot when every single person was doing it like a lot in a, every single video it just became overwhelming and then like overall the quality of Morphe stuff has never been like supremely amazing it's never been something like oh my god this is the most amazing Morphe product in the whole wide world like unless you had a code with them no one was saying that <laughs> like it's not a it's not it and then a lot of the reasons this brand became so big is straight up social media marketing which is perfectly fine like hey i'm gonna i'm on the internet too i get it but then it became younger people buying it in stores buying a ton of it and that's how morphe grew but them working with certain people who have controversial pasts them continuing to have the james charles palette on their site for some reason even though he's you know, last week he got in two scandals with underage boys. That's a thing. So it's just, they don't seem to have like a, anything except they're going to where the dollar is no matter what. And then their products just aren't the good quality. So that's Morphe. And I'm pretty sure there's other things that I'm missing on that one too. Mor Morphe and Huda Beauty, I feel like I'm missing stuff. But you guys can fill me in in the comments section. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't down below. Leave me a comment if you want to. Tell me a brand that you think should be on the next list of these if you want. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. Look at me promoting stuff. Look here. I have a shop, theopencrypt.com. I release alternative accessories and home stuff. See, it's okay to promote stuff, guys. I'm not saying it's not okay to promote stuff. It's not, it's okay to promote your codes. I just think that's one of the things that made Morphe not as attractive to people anymore. But anyways, thank you guys so much. Have a great and safe day there wherever you are. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.